Okay, so what did you guys do today? Yeah, so basically we first looked at how artists work and how they like use soundscapes or yeah, sound pieces with um, their visual work, some had visual work, some didn't, and then how they use that to convey a message and we use that for inspiration because later on we were gonna make our own like sound pieces. Yeah, I guess that sums it up. We were just looking at you know, rather than using physical like drawing methods of showing how you know, that the, the term is transition for our project. Rather than doing that, we started looking at sound, like using sound, which is a bit more difficult, because, you know, we, you know we, we, we're artists, we tend to use, we tend to learn by hand instead. So yeah, it was interesting. And um, what did you do when you first started? I mean, what's been the theme or what's been driving this session? Well, when we first started, when we got told to go out there and just record noise, I don't know, I guess we were just kind of just, what, what do we do? And we just stood there, like, trying to discuss, but it just ends up being, it's, it's more like, it's, it's more of a hands-on kind of experiment. It's like, you have to go out there and just record anything rather than plan it, because the time we had, which is roughly half an hour, wasn't enough time to, like, curate a piece. It's like, you have to just go out there hear you know what sounds interest you and then try it because you don't think about sounds all the time they're more subconscious you just hear them coming in and out of your ears don't focus on them so, yeah. okay. and how did you guys respond to the theme i think especially like what he said has a lot to do with transitioning because for some transitions in life like you can plan and for others you can't so it's sort of like that whole process of how we collected like our sound pieces that sort of followed with the theme of transition as well and also it um, helped us to like look into the world look at everyday things that might seem normal but try and find that kind of transition turning like meaning within it and then when we all like sat and discussed it and listened to everybody's sound pieces we realized like how deep all these things were like say like the running of the tap or like walking up the stairs in a train station how that sort of moves you from one block point to another point um and it was it easy to choose a theme that relates to everyone? No, I mean, in a way, transitions are really broad term. It's it's good that we can all tie our ideas together. But at first, looking at different, you know, we all have we all we're at different ages. We all like we have different mindsets. So when we talk about our ideas, it could be really deep or it could be like really shallow. But it's putting them together, making sure everyone is understanding on the same page, like why transition could link to their ideas rather than their initial thought. Like, we had a few words like colossal or melange, you know, it's like, how do you put them together? But once we were all in the same room and discuss how transition could affect us, it's like, you know, it's really, it really did work at the end, I think. And was it easy to kind of make decisions together in your groups? I think when we first started, it was a bit like, what's the idea, what should we do, as he said, but then I said, if you just do it, like, I feel, I don't know, it takes like, for my group, it took like one person to sort of say something and then we tried it and realised, oh yeah, it works. So sort of like, not to overthink it too much, but to just sort of, I don't know, because that sounds are all around. Say like with drawing, it might be easier for artists, but then think about it, you have to sort of, I don't know, not plan, but it's more like strategic. With sounds, it's just there. Do you know what I mean? So sort of like, Think about what's around you and sort of record it and see how it works and move with it. So sort of, yeah, like move with your piece, like move around, find something and then you are like sort of immersed within it. Even if you can't see it, like you're still sort of, so I think it kind of works out. I think it also, sorry, I think it also is like the, the problem with group work, well not the problem, is it can be amazing sometimes, but to initially start, it's like trying not to offend people, you know, like you, you, you kind of, don't want to take the lead sometimes because you don't want to feel overpowering. You want them to have their ideas because they can have equally as you know good as uh, good ideas. But you can trust yourself, like you know how you think. So it's like kind of being able to trust others in your group to you know have you know bring up the ideas and share them. You know in a fair environment rather than arguing over things. So that's initially it starts off slow because you're trying to care for others. But it's like you have to all be on the same page, which is that's the hardest thing. But after that, it's, it's really good. And then in terms of having one minute and 30 seconds, was that challenging or 
Easy. Well, I mean, one minute and 30 seconds, I mean, could have given me five minutes, I still would have been confused. It's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's one thing to to record a noise that, in, uh, that sound that interests you, but it's another to crop it to what actually excites me, what sounds good as a small clip. Like, do you want ambiguity or do you want to capture a whole essence? Like, how much time do you need to capture what you're trying to portray to the audience? It's like having to think about all of those as well as, do I like this sound? It's just, you know, one minute, 30. It was nice because we could all share it, but while recording it on your own, it's like, I, put in. I want this to be amazing. I want this one now, one minute thirty to be lit. You know, <laughs> you know. I guess you like us. You know, like we both said, like we both experienced. It's just getting out there and doing it. Just being ruthless with your own work. Just being critical while you're trying to capture your know, footage. Transitions and turnings. Were you thinking about that as you recorded it, or did you go the other way around and recorded it and then thought of ways that it would fit, or did you do both at the same time in your group? Um, Don't know. No, we thought about it before. Well, I don't know, for me, because I like thinking about context, I, I just find it important. So even if you have it at the back of your mind, you sort of like subconsciously go out and sort of find things that link with it. So we thought about it before, then we went and we did it, and then sort of linked it after. I don't know, for me, I, I easily link mm. things. It's just, I could just do that. So, yeah. so I could sort of like find it within it. And then it's quite cool, because sort of like you create a piece, and then you cut your piece from like a different perspective, like, okay that's like someone analyzing it instead of the person who created it and you sort of like try and find that meaning within yourself and then it yeah <laughs> yeah i think you just you just it's like it's kind of on the go kind of work like yeah you might plan the idea but once you actually make it you realize when you sit back and listen to your own piece as a third person it's like oh wait this could be another thing oh wait what he said might be true let me add to that you know it's never really i don't think it's a this might be harsh to say, but I don't think it's a good piece of work if you can't add to it afterwards. Like, if you started off with a strong idea, but didn't allow your sp allow space for it to develop into others, it's just it's a bit of a narrow project. It ends at one point. You want it to get to expand, which I think is good because so we start off with experiments, experiments pieces, and everyone is adding ideas you didn't think of. It shows how much more your idea could relate to, which is really good. So you could branch off. I think that ties in really nicely to the activity that we've just done, the idea of you know starting off at one point and then kind of branching out to different points because when we look behind like it behind me, uh, we've got all those post-its with the word yeah. <laughs> or in front of you you've got all those posters with the words. Yeah. Um, how, what words did you put there and why? Well, at the end of the session what I put there what I put was I'm studying architecture so I kinda had to be loyal. <laughs> so I put architecture down, I put Failure. I think failure was my main one because me myself, uh, the way I studied, you know, doing fine art foundation and whatnot, it's like you learn to fail in your work. Like you, you learn that. Don't consider it as a failure. Just keep going. Like I've learned to push. Like keep pushing. I, I, there's times where you don't feel good. You're like, oh, what do I do? This is rubbish. But you shouldn't stop there. You should just carry on. Which is, you know, it's also a transition for me personally. It's like you should always keep pushing for the next idea. It might be you might be stuck for a day, a month, a week, you know, a month, a week. So wrong way. But you just keep going. That's the point. That's why I see failure as a transition. Yeah. What about you? Um, I think the two words that I remember that I wrote was ambivalence because um, obviously when you're going through a transition or a turning point, you don't know how you feel. You can feel happy about it, sad about it. Not all transitions are good. Not all transitions are bad. So it's sort of like. I was thinking about the process, like that bit in between, which leads to my other word, which was like loss. Not all people are lost, but it's sort of like, you, there's no word for that bit between like A and B, apart from obviously transition, but it's like, it's not like a, do you know what I mean? It's not like a solid sort of place. And everyone's at a different place when they reach there. I said, some people might be calm, some people might be like quite frantic. And it's just, I was sort of thinking about that bit in between that people don't really like think about, because that bit in between can sort of shape how you land into that, that next section. That's deep. Is there anything you found? Well, how do you think this links the wider project? Well, the this project particular being, session, how do you think it links to or what you've just done? Well, in terms of linking, well, we have to kind of create the topic to to go further on. We have to finally, you know, to finalise something. And it's like, 
just having a broader sense of what art is, like, you know, in terms of sound or, you know, imagery, painting, photography, whatnot. It's like, if you don't experience different types of art, we've already narrowed ourselves down, which is a problem. So it's like having a first impression of what sound could be like, not even what it is, but what it could be like, intrigues us to think, or we can, you know, to consider it at least, which is really good because there's loads of artists that work with sound. And it's like, we, we should include them. It's a bit biased not to. Mm. So it's nice to have that experience. Yeah. I would literally say the same thing. I would say, because obviously we're calling out this when people come towards us, as I um, said, you don't want to like limit yourself to like one specific sort of art, to so just like drawing or whatever. By exploring like different ways of creating art and the meanings within it, we can make like a rounded sort of, what's it, exhibition. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even if it's like one person or something, but at least. Within that work, which is it should sort of be like representative of lots of different things, like how we've just chose one title, but a lot of things are represented in it. So at least that can be like portrayed in our work as well. Thanks, guys. Right, what do I do to save this? <laughs> ah.